Hi, this is David Cochran. Today let's crack open Twitter Bootstrap 2.0. I just want to start with uh, giving an overview of some of the components in this new front-end development framework, their new version of it. Uh, there's some great stuff here. Then we're going to get our own, uh, download it, and start working with it, and get into the new 12-column responsive grid. It's great stuff. If you come to the new documentation page, you'll find that it's got a nice new layout and it's divided across multiple pages now. Also notice these nice icons that they've used uh, here. These Many of these are included as part of the Bootstrap framework now. If you look through their documentation you'll find they've got lots of goodies. If you look at their base CSS they've got elements for typography, code, tables, forms, buttons, and even icons by glyph icons. Really beautiful icons and they've made it super easy to implement them. We'll come back to that in a future video. Continuing on, you can look at the various components they've got for buttons, navigation, labels, typography, thumbnails, and so on. And they've got some fantastic JavaScript plugins that really do great work. One of the especially nice new ones is they've got a built-in plugin for a nice little carousel. It's not super fully featured, but it does the trick if all you need is a basic carousel with a couple of handles on it. Then moving on, um, one of the greatest new features is this new 12-column responsive grid system they've got. We're going to come back in a little bit and look at uh, how to implement this and work with it, but just to see what it does, uh, they've got it implemented in their documentation itself, and so if I resize this screen, you're going to see it adjust to the width of my screen, and then as we get smaller, it's going to adjust for a handheld device and so it starts flowing vertically down the page for a nice vertical scroll. Uh, notice also that the main navigation collapses and it gives us a nice drop down which is a rec recommended best practice now to hide that navigation so I get directly to the content and drop that navigation down when we need it. Great stuff. I look forward to getting into it with you. Let's um, start by looking at what it takes to grab a download. But actually before we do that I want to point out that for those of you who would like to update a website from version 1.4, that's the previous version of Twitter Bootstrap, there are a number of issues you have to address and these are laid out for us in a file they've put together. So from the main documentation homepage, if you click on the link upgrading from 1.4 you get this page and it walks you through what's new and some of the things you need to do in order to get upgraded. It's kind of an extensive list to be honest and so in many cases you may choose to um, almost start from scratch because there's a lot of work to be done. Alright, let's um, work on grabbing these files. If you uh, would like to get your own customized version of the files, they've built this nice customize and download page. And you can see this in the main navigation and this allows you to choose just the CSS you need for only the elements that you'd like to use in your site so you can trim down your style sheet if you'd like to. And then as you go on down you can also select which of the jQuery plugins you're going to actually employ on your site and trim down the size of your plugin file. You can also customize the colors of your buttons, the number of columns in your grid, um, and a number of other elements here also your base font family and sizes can be adjusted and then you can customize and download here. I'm going to leave the default options. I'm going to show you what it looks like when you just click and download. It's going to take a few seconds to process my requests. Here it's working. Still working. And then we get, after just a few seconds, the option to save this. And it comes down as a file called bootstrap.zip and I'm going to save this file in a folder called From Customize so that I can compare for you the difference of what you get when you download these things. So I've downloaded that. You're going to see that From Customize looks like this. And I get just the CSS and the minified version, the glyph icons, and then all wrapped together the bootstrap plugins that I selected to use as well as a minified version. 
So it's a pretty nice pack, but of course I need to supply the markup. Now I can also grab these files from the main documentation homepage, and if I just click here on download bootstrap, I'm going to get something very similar, but of course it's going to be everything, not customized. And so if I go back out and uh, let me just grab it from here, I'm going to save here the files that I got from the main site. And that's going to give me the same results except with no customization. So from the main site, same content, same stuff except uncustomized. Now I can also get files from GitHub. So if I want to view the project on GitHub, I click this blue button. It's going to take me over here to where they're working on the project live, uh, the development community of folks who's driving this, and of course MDO and FAT as the leaders of the project. So I can download the zip folder, which includes everything from here if I like. And it's worth taking a look at this because we get some more good stuff here. So I'm going to save here the full download of all the files that are being worked on. And this includes the documentation files and other files that come along with it. So if I unzip this, I find that all the documentation has been brought down, as well as all the JavaScript plugins, each as a separate file. And so these have not been compiled together or minified, and I can pull apart and grab the various elements that I'd like if I just want to work in it more fluidly. Also, for those of you who like to work with less for your CSS, the less files are provided, and you can work on them yourself in your own less workflow. Okay, so that's how to get it. Let's um, move on to begin putting together our own little version of a bootstrap site. So I'm going to take and work with the files from Customize here. I'm going to make a copy of that folder and I'm going to call it my site. Okay, so I've got the bootstrap stuff here. I can get rid of the zip folder. I don't need it any longer. And I can pull out the CSS image and JS folders into my main directory and get rid of that bootstrap folder. So I've got the stuff or the assets that I need for my bootstrap site, but what I need of course is, is an index file. And there's a couple places I can grab that. Um, I'm going to get it from the documentation. If you'll go back out to the bootstrap documentation, um, if you look in their main menu you can go to examples. And here they've got um, basic markup for setting up um, a site that's running with their CSS classes um, already begun, including that main navigation and a few other elements. I'm going to work with this basic marketing site layout, as we did before with version 1.4. And I'm actually going to right-click on this and save link as in order just to save this file to my chosen folder. So I'm going to navigate to my site and save hero.html to that folder. And that's going to serve as my starting point. I'm going to rename this to index and so it'll serve as my home page. I'm going to open it in my editor. Okay. And then I'm also going to open it in my browser. And at first here, um, the links are broken because the file structure is different than what it was out in the documentation. So as before we need to go correct our links. Let me walk you through that real quick. What we see is that I need to go into my CSS folder to get bootstrap. So I need to remove this assets and uh, step out. So I'm gonna do a find and replace. I'm gonna replace my double dot slash assets with nothing throughout this file and that should help me be linked up again. So let's save that, go to our browser, and refresh. Now the reason I did it with the find and replace is because there are also links to JavaScript down at the bottom. And we're going to come back in a later video and hook up the JavaScript, um, but today let's check out what we've got with 
um, the CSS. So that gives us this file. We have the main hero unit, some nice buttons, an example of a three column um, grid layout. And if we look at how this is done, it's a little bit different than with version 1.4. In version 1.4, uh, I'm going to go down to this row with these columns. So here's an example row of columns with version 2. And where before we had a class of span one third, that was because we had a 16 column grid. Now our grid is only 12 columns, and so a span 4 takes the place of span 1 third. Span 8, of course, then takes the place of span 2 thirds. And so this really kind of simplifies things. For my workflow, at least, 12 columns is plenty to work with, and so I like the change personally. Um, you see the classes that you apply for buttons. You'll see how the row is set up to contain our columns, and that helps the layout work as it should to fit within our um, default uh, grid width. And what I'd like to show you then is the style sheet setup. In this arrangement that they prepared to make the layout responsive, here's what we do. We start out with our base bootstrap CSS. Then they've added some custom styles to provide padding for that top fixed navigation. They haven't wanted to require you to fix the navigation across the top, and so when you do fix the navigation across the top, you need to either provide these lines here in the head of your document or in a custom style sheet where you pull those in. Once that's done, then to add responsiveness to your site, you link in the Bootstrap Responsive CSS as a next style sheet. So we're in our file structure. You'll see where these are provided. Um, let me go back out here. So in the CSS folder, I've got Bootstrap CSS. And it looks as though I'm missing Bootstrap Responsive.css. But let's check and see. If I go to my file and I start to resize things, we're going to see it adjusting responsively. Now, of course, when we get down to this width, we've got to remove that top padding. So we'd have to include a little media query to remove that top padding. But we see the responsiveness happening. And so here's how this worked. When I went and grabbed the customized version of my download, let me go out to those uh, the customize setup here, and I selected that I wanted to include the responsive layouts. This was checked. Then that responsive bit was actually included in the files that I downloaded, and so that's folded in to the bottom of that Bootstrap CSS style sheet. If you open that up, and if you search on responsive in this file, it's going to take you down to the responsive section of the file. Now that's what happens if I download it from the customize with responsive checked. Now if instead I had gone and gotten my files from the main home page of their documentation back out here, sorry, at their home page here, if I had downloaded Bootstrap from this link, here's what I would have gotten. I've saved these under a, that folder called from the main site and what you get in this case is you get the separate style sheets. You get Bootstrap Responsive and its minified version separately from the main Bootstrap. So this file that we've got, this hero unit that we've made our index, is um, set up as if it's expecting us to have these as separate style sheets. In this case we don't, and so if we've done it using the customized version where we want responsiveness built in, then we can just delete this second style sheet link because it's not relevant. So we can save that and test it and make sure it all still works. And it works just like normal and so we know that we're good. Alright, so let's begin doing a little bit of work with this grid. Let's imagine that I want to set up a second row of four columns and then another row of two columns. We can throw that together real easily here. I'm gonna work in my new index.html built from that hero HTML. I'm going to take this example row of columns. Let me eliminate that space there. There we go. Um, I'm just going to, well, actually, let's build it fresh. I'm going to go on down below my 
first row, I'm going to do a little comment that's going to say end row 1, right? And now I'm going to create a new one. So this is div class row that we use to contain each row. Those of you who have worked with Twitter Bootstrap before recognize this. Okay. And now we're going to do a new div for each column. And this is going to be our class. If I want four to fit across here, my total is going to be 12 that I'm aiming for, so I'm going to use a div of class span three for each of these. And I'm going to grab the content from up above just as a handy way to get some content flowing here and paste that here between my div class span three. Then I can repeat this three more times copy and paste, 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 save that, and come out and refresh, and there's my row of four. If I'd like to have row of two, then obviously I just need to have two columns of span six. So I'm going to repeat my row, make this end of row three, eliminate two columns and change these to span six and I'm off and rolling. Now if you look at how these work with the responsiveness built in we can just resize and all of these begin snapping into place. That's so handy and you'll notice that our navigation is working. We just need to clear out that extra space. So we're off to a good start working with the Bootstrap framework. We've got our files in place. We're ready to roll. We've got the grid flowing. Let's come back in the next video and we'll work on that navigation, including making it adjust to smaller screen widths. That will be coming soon. See you then.